This short tutorial will introduce you to the basic steps of conducting a literature review, from defining your question to setting the sources you ultimately decide to use. It will also highlight some of the MCW libraries and other resources that are available to help you with your literature review. This is a simple outline of the steps in the literature research process. We will go over each of these steps briefly in this tutorial. Note that steps 3, 4, and 5 are all a part of the process of actually finding the literature. These steps will be demonstrated using MCW Library's resources. Step 1. Define your research topic or question. These are some basic strategies for defining your research question. Some of this may be familiar, but it is worth reiterating. First of all, context is important. You need to understand the parameters you're working within, whether it's a specific assignment, providing information to colleagues, or writing an article for publication. The context influences how you might approach your topic and will help you think about the types of resources you'll need. Next, when thinking about your research question, start by identifying a general area. Think about what you're personally interested in. If you're not interested, it's much harder to get motivated. Once you have a general idea of what you're interested in, you'll want to focus it to a specific area within your general topic. For example, a specific geographic location or whether you want to know about causes of the disease versus treatments. You may even do some basic literature searches on your general topic to help you figure out aspects that might be available to concentrate on. And finally, you'll want to use measurable action words that help you move towards an interesting question to answer with your literature review. Action words are nouns derived from verbs and include words like contribution, development, or assessment. Here are two example topics. Think for a second about which one you think represents a stronger research question. Of the two, the second example would probably be considered the better choice. There is a clear specific question on a focused topic of personal interest using an action word to specify exactly what the literature review is seeking to answer. Here are a few more tips for helping you develop your research question. The PICO model is generally used to generate clinical questions, but it can be helpful to think about for any health-related, evidence-based research question. If you're having trouble focusing in on a specific topic, try thinking of your area of interest in terms of a patient population, intervention, comparison, and outcome. The PICO model's strength is that it can help you identify your key search terms. One final tip for step one, bounce your ideas off of others. Research doesn't happen in a vacuum. Your colleagues, classmates, and instructors can provide helpful feedback. Speaking with a librarian is another good option. Once you have your research question, the next step is to describe it using keywords. You may want to create a list of keywords before you do any searching. This list gives you a starting place that may grow and change as you think about your topic, read more about it, get exposed to synonyms, and see the controlled vocabulary. Keywords are literally one or two word phrases that you'll use to put together your search and may or may not be explicitly stated in your research question. When you're creating your list, think about related terms, including terms that may be broader or narrower. Synonyms are also important, as not every article or book describes the same topic with the same words. If you are searching in databases like a library catalog or PubMed, taking advantage of controlled vocabulary can also be very helpful for locating items that might be about your topic, but use different words to describe it. Using controlled vocabulary will be demonstrated in a bit. Steps 3, 4, and 5 are the key components of actually finding and acquiring the literature you will use for your lit review. Step 3 is performing your searches to get results you may use in your literature review. Step 4 is reviewing those results to determine which items are actually of use to you. Step 5 is accessing the full text of articles or books that may be helpful. These steps may be repeated, done simultaneously, and or done in a slightly different order, 
but you will complete them all at some point during the whole process. Before moving into a demonstration of performing a search, evaluating the results, and accessing the text, steps 3, 4, and 5, I would like to point out some of the resources that are available to you for completing these steps in the first place. The links on the slide are clickable, so please feel free to pause the module, open them up, and bookmark them. The MCW libraries have a number of resources pertinent to public health, and there are also great free resources from recognized organizations such as the Partners in Information Access for the Public Health Workforce. Now we will do a quick demonstration of the three steps using two of the many resources available through the MCW libraries. This is the MCW Libraries homepage. For more information about the many services and resources available to you during your literature review and your entire time as an MCW student, please feel free to explore our website, including taking a look at all the resources available on our e-resources page. If you have questions or would like assistance at any time, just click the Ask Us button. Now let's start with PubMed for our literature search demonstration. Use the PubMed Linkout link on our homepage under the Jump Starts menu. Using the specific Linkout link, will connect PubMed with MCW's journal subscriptions, which is important for accessing the full text of articles. This will be demonstrated momentarily. Let's use the malnutrition example as our demonstration search. We will keep the search fairly simple. For additional help with more advanced searching in PubMed, please contact the MCW libraries and or make use of the help documentation and tutorials from PubMed itself. Note that the use of Boolean searching, the ands, ors, and nesting parentheses, allows us to take advantage of related terms and synonyms. Boolean searching is a strategy that can be used in many electronic literature resources. After clicking Search, we see the search results and can move ahead with evaluating them, step four in our literature review process. Remember to keep in mind your original question. In this case, I'm interested in the impact malnutrition has on this population, so articles on topics like risk factors and supplementation are not of direct interest. This article looks interesting. Let's take a look at the abstract by clicking on the title. The first thing I want to point out in this citation record is that it is a Medline record. These records make up the majority but not all of PubMed records, and notably it means that the citation has controlled vocabulary assigned to it. In PubMed, this controlled vocabulary is called MESH for medical subject headings. Looking at the controlled vocabulary can help you identify additional keywords for searching, as well as help you understand what the article is about. You can also use the MESH terms directly by adding them to your search. Many other citation databases also take advantage of controlled vocabulary, as I mentioned in Step 2. The other important thing to note in the record is the Get It from MCW Libraries button. This is the button that will allow you to access the full text if we subscribe to it, or request it from another library if we don't. PubMed is just one example. You will see the Get It button or a Get It link throughout our citation databases, and this tool allows you to access the information directly. This is step five in our literature review process. Now that we've done a quick search in the article citation database PubMed, let's take a look at one other resource, the MCW Libraries Catalog. You can also access this resource from the Jump Starts menu on our homepage. By default, you will see the screen for searching titles. Let's switch to the keyword search option, which will allow us to search across all fields for all items. There are some search tips that can be helpful to take a look at, but I'm just going to do a basic search. The search results by default are ranked by a relevancy algorithm. You can also sort by date to see the most recent items first. 
In general, books won't be as recent as articles, but books do tend to give broader overviews and provide information that has been well established. As I scroll through the list in date order, I'll note that my basic search did not pull up very many recent items that are actually useful. This is an example of a time where you might want to tweak your search or look for a more appropriate place to search. But this Reducing the Impact of Poverty on Health book looks like it's of possible interest, and I want to point out that anything with a link to online content will be available to you electronically no matter where you are located. Let's click on the record to take a look at a couple of things. Again, there's a link to click into the content. I would like to point out the tab for the full record. Here you can see that the keyword malnutrition appeared in a couple of places in the provided table of contents. As I scroll down to the bottom, we can also see the subjects given to this book. The subjects come from another controlled vocabulary, much like MeSH, and again, may be very helpful in your searching. That's the end of my quick demonstration of just two of the resources available to you. While PubMed and our library catalog are good starting points for many biomedical and health-related literature reviews, you may not find what you're looking for in either of those places. But the general principles of searching, evaluating your search results, looking for controlled vocabulary, and accessing materials electronically when available are applicable wherever you're searching. And if you need help with your search terms or with deciding where to look for the literature, please feel free to contact the MCW Libraries. Now we will briefly discuss the final step in the literature review process, writing your paper and properly citing the sources you use. First, be sure you are familiar with the formatting and other requirements laid out in your syllabus. Although this seems obvious, it's common for people to remember an assignment as requiring one thing, when in reality it requires something completely different. Next, take advantage of the resources available to you in terms of actually writing your paper. There are a number of websites, books, and other tools that you may find helpful. The libraries have pulled together a guide with many of these resources. Please feel free to pause this video, click the link, and bookmark it. Finally, be sure to cite your sources. Anytime you are using an idea from another person, whether agreeing, disagreeing, or simply quoting, you need to give proper attribution. Not giving proper attribution is plagiarism. Citing your sources also allows your readers to easily return to the original sources. The MCW Libraries subscribe to a very useful tool called RefWorks that will allow you to create citations and bibliographies using the required citation style. Learning the ins and outs of how to use RefWorks is beyond the scope of this module, but the MCW Library staff are happy to provide training and support, and there are also a number of tutorials and other resources available, including online tutorials, that we can point you to. That concludes our module on the steps in a literature review and the resources available to you. Thank you for taking the time to view this module. We hope you have found it helpful.